Today, it's my great honor to sign the Cybersecurity and Infrastructure Security Agency Act into law. Every day, America's adversaries are testing our cyber defenses. They attempt to gain access to our critical infrastructure, exploit our great companies, and undermine our entire way of life. And we can't let that happen. This vital legislation will establish a new agency within the Department of Homeland Security to lead the federal government's civilian response to these cyber threats against our nation. We've had many, many threats against our nation. Cyber is going to be the newest form, and the threats have taken place, and we've been doing a pretty good at knocking, knocking them out. But now we'll be — this will make us, I think, much more effective. The men and women of the new Cybersecurity and Infrastructure Security Agency will be on the front lines of our cyber defense. They will partner with the private sector and all levels of government to defend America's power grids, banks, telecommunications, and other critical parts of our economy. The cyber battle space evolves, and it is evolving, and unfortunately faster than a lot of people want to talk about, but battle space it is. So as the cyber battle space evolves, this new agency will ensure that we confront the full range of threats from nation states, cyber criminals, and other malicious actors, of which there are many. A new article in The New York Times suggests a massive cyber attack is on the horizon, and many systems worldwide are just simply not prepared for it. In the article, an IDT cybersecurity expert says that his system was attacked with stolen weapons that were designed by the National Security Agency. Hmm. These hackers, uh, we heard in the New York Times story that they got a hold of weapons that were created by the NSA. First of all, how, how would hackers get a hold of those? Well, in this case, uh, these weapons were, these, these exploits were released by a group called the Shadow Brokers. Uh, no one's quite sure who they are. I think there's a good amount of consensus that they're probably a Russian related group. There is a possibility that that is a an insider or a mole, uh, you know, possibly a former official at NSA. No one is really sure uh, that there, there's obviously there's probably a lot of work, as you can imagine, going on in the intelligence community to find out how these things were released. Uh, but of course, the reality for all of us is the genie is out of the bottle. They these things are on the street. Um, and, and criminals and other groups have access to them now. But when we're in an incident, this is where we would manage an incident, and we do that collaboratively because the federal government is just, we can't do it alone. I'm talking about a powerful electromagnetic pulse uh, that they say could knock out uh, entire cities in the U.S. It seems to me the stakes have gotten higher when this is not uh, just a hydrogen bomb, which is uh, massive enough, scary enough, but when you walk through this, uh, what exactly is an EMP? It's the burst of radiation when a nuclear weapon is detonated above the Earth. No blast felt on Earth, but the electromagnetic fields still reach the surface. Uh, and the bottom line is uh, that the aim of this is to knock out power in much of the U.S. Uh, and the claim from experts is that outages could last for months, affecting hospitals, emergency services, food, and water. They were probably sent here so that we put them in our jails. Because to put them in our jails, they didn't pay the electric bill. To put them, oh, I like that much better. Oh. No, get those lights off. Off. Turn them off. They're too, they're too bright. Turn them off. Turn them off. Let's go. Ready? Turn off the lights. Turn off the lights. CBS News has learned Russian hackers were able to gain access to the control rooms of U.S. electric utilities last year. Federal officials say the hackers work for a state-sponsored group known as Dragonfly or Energetic Bear. They were able to compromise the grid to the point where they could have caused blackouts and disrupted power flows throughout the country. Unless we make decisions now, within five years, our electricity will start to run out. Growing concern over whether the U.S. is actually prepared to respond if our power grid is compromised to cybersecurity expert Morgan Wright. Morgan, uh, ironically, I think what I read is that one of the good things we have going for us is our grid is so old, 
it might be uh, <laughs> it might not be smart enough to be compromised. <laughs> yeah, look, all you have to do, Charles, is watch a natural disaster, and you'll see that um, our power grid is still fragile. We're doing a lot better at protecting it, but that's the problem. You know, it's kind of the analogy of saying, well, I could go two rounds with Mike Tyson back in the day. Yeah, well, you still can't go 15. We've got to be able to go that full 15 rounds and survive a direct attack. Look, Russia's been using Ukraine as their punching bag for a lot of years, so our lessons we need to learn are watching what they're doing in Ukraine right now. Yeah, I remember uh, it wasn't long ago when our, we had a major power outage in the Northeast that, that was caused by a small incident in Canada. So. Uh, it, it, it stands to reason we're extraordinarily yes. vulnerable, and we've been vulnerable for a long time. What, why don't we fix this? Look, you know, if you look at the patchwork that is called the energy grid, I mean, it is a collection of a lot of different things, a lot of different power stations, a lot of different technologies. They're transitioning, trying to make things more network oriented, trying to beef up their cybersecurity, but that brings its own problems because now we're trying to connect older systems to network technology. And that's one of the flaws that they took advantage of in the Ukraine attack. They, they attacked these cables that connected the power systems to the computer networks and uh, physically damaged them. So, yeah, there's a lot of work we still have to do on this, Charles, but the biggest thing you're talking about is that recovery piece. We know we're going to get attacked. The question is, how fast can we reconstitute and recover our energy? Because if you want to go after a nation, uh, as was Deidre was saying that other thing, it's a maximum war. Go after their power, go after their water, and you right. can bring a nation to its knee. Think about what happens if the electric grid were to go down. No more power in your home, hospitals, airports, banks, ATMs, satellites, telecoms. The list is endless. U.S. intelligence believes hackers are already inside the grid with hundreds of thousands of probes and attacks every single day. The lights went out on Donald Trump, literally. I have a full faith in our intelligence agencies. Whoops, they just turned off the light. That must be the intelligence agencies. <laughs> there it goes. Okay. You guys okay? You see? You see? There it is again. That is not a transformer malfunction. That is an electromagnetic pulse. It affects everything electrical for miles and miles, and it is happening again. This is what caused everything in the first place. Don't you see that? And it is going to send us back to the Stone Age. Turn off the lights. Turn off the lights. The chanting worked. Too much light, not enough light. Nothing to do but make light of it. Is I have a full faith in our intelligence agencies. We're seeing the probing or targeting of utilities in the United States. Why it's disconcerting is that there's capability, growing capability, but also it's showing intent. It's already happened. Russia is widely suspected of shutting off power to 230,000 people in Ukraine in December 2015. Now, a Russian operation called Dragonfly targets the U.S. The warning went out late Friday by email from the FBI and the Department of Homeland Security. And as you say, it is be being called a rare public warning by those groups. The attacks are by a sophisticated set of actors, not clear exactly who's behind this, and they began in May. Here's what we know about which specific sectors are being targeted. And as you say, it's a very long list here, uh, starting with nuclear, energy, aviation, water, and critical critical manufacturing all being targeted by this mysterious hacking group that the government says has been active for several months and has penetrated some of those networks. What do we know about who is behind this? Not much definitively, but the cybersecurity firm CrowdStrike has said uh, that they believe that this could be an entity they are calling Berserk Bear, which they say is affiliated with the Russian Federation. And experts have said that what they're seeing here is aggressive activity but no destructive action yet. And they say that this campaign is still ongoing. So it looks like what you've got here is a, a elaborate probe operation going into all of these sensitive industries uh, in which the hackers are determined to figure out how those industries' networks work, uh, maintain a maybe permanent presence in them. To what end, though, is unclear. Is this uh, sort of a just-in-case kind of preparation for total war that intelligence agencies go through all the time? Or is this the 
precursor to some more subtle, uh, more narrow attack that could happen in the near future. Uh, not clear at all necessarily where this is going, but the U.S. government wants people in those industries to know that this is happening and to take steps to stop it, guys. Go back to the house.